they're not really themselves. They are drowning in alcoholism, and that can happen with addiction as well. They will do certain things to uh, kind of fulfill their, their internal needs. Hello, everybody. My name is Pej. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the facade of drug addiction. Now, I'm a drug interventionist. I specialize in helping people with addiction, alcoholism, and mental health. The reason that I picked this subject today is because, first, let me tell you about myself. When I was in drug addiction, at least for 18 to 19 years of solid addiction to alcohol, to drugs, um, and for a long time, I, I drank and used because I loved the effect, but truth be told, it helped me overcome my insecurities. It, uh, you know, it, there was definitely times when I thought I was someone more than I was, you know, and I, I would constantly try to uh, impress people and go out and uh, do certain things that were grandiose uh, or build up my ego. And on top of that, I sold drugs for a long time based off of the fact that I wanted to nurture my addiction. Uh, everything I'd seen in movies, I wanted to be that, or at least I thought I was that. And then on top of that, um, I wanted to make money. It was a thrill. It was just a thrill. And so when I got sober, by the time I went to this recovery home, I remember being told by a counselor there, he was a, sh a straight shooter, he had no qualms, and he told me the truth. He would often put a, metaphorically put a mirror in front of me and show me who I really was and who I really wasn't. And uh, what ended up happening there was that he, he would point out how much of a facade my life was and that I was drowning in drug addiction and alcoholism, and if I didn't change that, I would only get worse and worse. So it's interesting for me now to, to do the type of work that I do. I, I help people with their addiction or with their alcoholism get sober. And then when I see them on the path of sobriety, I also uh, notice when certain things start to manifest themselves within themselves, their ego, if you will, their addiction, their alcoholism. Um, they will act out. They will do certain things to uh, kind of fulfill their, their internal needs. And they don't have the drugs and alcohol anymore, so they start getting addicted to other things. They will start uh, getting addicted to things like porn or, or validation from, from men or women, depending on who they are and how they roll. Um, they will you know, chase a, a cheap thrill. They'll try to make fast money in illegal ways or even in ways that, that aren't probably ethical or the right way of doing so. And, and so they're still manifesting the facade and they are still staying stuck. Um, real recovery, when you come into recovery, is you, you purify yourself. Like you look for the best version of yourself and you try to live through that. At least in the schools of thought that I'm part of and also the type of recovery that I was taught in the type that I try to help others try to embrace and learn. So, so that we overcome the facade and we don't keep having that double or triple or quadruple life. A lot of times when there are alcoholics, they live a double life because they still try to function in everyday life. They're functioning alcoholics. They make it to work um, when they can, if they can. But uh, a lot of people don't know what's really going on when they're at home. They're drinking. They're hiding their alcohol from their loved ones. Um, they're trying not to. They're obviously hiding it when they're on the road. They will go to bars or, or clubs or things like that. And nobody really knows how hard they're drinking except for the people that are drinking with them or that are are closest to them in, in that realm. And, and so the double life is, is taking place, but there's a facade there. They're not really themselves. They are drowning in alcoholism, and that can happen with addiction as well, uh, drug addiction. A lot of people uh, try to bury their sorrows in heroin, meth. Many different types of addictions are taken on because of certain things that are happening, like trauma. Trauma that has pretty much defined their life and and it's a certain type of narrative that's within their thought process to where they think they are useless, helpless. They can't do anything about anything in life because they are stuck. They're stuck on drugs and they don't know what to do with themselves. So they continue to think that they're worthless, they're unworthy. And, uh, and that within itself is a facade too. That to me is the ego that tried to build you up and then break you down and hurt you. Uh, rather than you actually wanting to help yourself. So what options do people have when they want to take control of their life? So if you're in full-blown addiction or alcoholism, you have the option of getting better. If you think there's no hope or you don't know how to go about it, it doesn't hurt to ask for help. And then what about people who are actually in the path of recovery? What options do they have to take control of their life? Well, when you become aware of your shortcomings and you really don't want to continue to hurt yourself because truly your shortcomings are working against you, 
you ask for help from people that know what they're doing, whether they're professionals or they're people that have some experience with recovery. But you ask them, how can I get real control of my life and do what's best for me so I don't keep acting out impulsively or doing things that work against me and my recovery. So how do you know if somebody that you love and care about is at that stage of addiction that needs help? Um, if you see someone deteriorating, if their life is falling apart, if they can't function in everyday life, if they're getting trouble in the workplace, in school, um, if they're crashing their cars a lot, if they're getting incarcerated, then you know it's a great indicator that this person needs help. So if you or someone you know is not doing well, please never hesitate to reach out to us. I mean, if you, I get a lot of phone calls from people that want interventions because of a family member or, or a friend that's truly suffering. I'll make myself available to you. You can always call the number on the screen um, or just contact me in many different places on drug underscore intervention on Instagram. You can send me a message if you're not comfortable in calling me just yet, or you can uh, check out my TikTok, which is at Pej Interventions, and then we also have this YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. We make a lot of videos that are in relation to drug addiction, alcoholism, and mental health.